Good morning. Today we find ourselves at the Feast of the Dedication uh, in Jerusalem of the Temple and is now better known as Hanukkah, uh, which celebrates the liberation of Jerusalem and the cleansing of the Temple and the rededication of their altar. Uh, it would be mid-December. Uh, this period of time uh, is a cooler time of year. Uh, Jesus is found walking on the portico or porch of the temple with a number of people around him. Um, John mentions the festival uh, of the dedication it has a special meaning beyond just marking a particular time of year. Uh, the temple represents the presence of God with the people and Jesus is the new temple in our faith. Much as Jesus is teaching in Sabbath or much of his teaching in Sabbath is on the Sabbath and um, it always seems that the Pharisees are sort of hovering around waiting to see what they can find him doing and perhaps something wrong that they could arrest him for. Uh, I, I want to mention that uh, we refer to the Jews but uh, just for your knowledge, just, these are not uh, Jewish people at large um, who oppose Jesus. Most of these people are, are the ones, the common ones, who find it easier to believe in what Jesus is saying to them. The Pharisees are the ones who are uh, wealthy and powerful and fear that they have something to lose should uh, Jesus take over uh, their power. Jesus has a tendency to turn our lives upside down uh, and that would more, be more difficult for a person who perhaps had already made it and um, was quite comfortable in the world they lived in. G uh, the people say to Jesus, how long will you hold us in suspense? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. Um, obviously, his parables were not making sense or he did not understand completely. Now the Pharisees pretty much knew what was being said. Um, they were just waiting for him to slip up. Uh, it sometimes feels like they should be reading his Miranda rights uh, because anything that can and will be used against him uh, is what they're looking for. I'm sure Jesus was getting pretty tired of these questions anyway. Jesus answered, I told you and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. Now if you recall, he has uh, given sight to a blind person. However, the blind uh, gentleman's parents had been told that they were um, not to tell anyone that he was the Christ or they would be banned from the synagogue. Jesus goes on, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them me is greater than all and no one can take them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is what true discipleship means, the relationship of our God and our Father. He is uh, continuing this strain of teaching as he did earlier in, this, in John's Gospel. Um, it's pretty vivid as we talk about the Good Shepherd passage. I think most people are familiar with that one. He is declaring he knows his followers and they know him and that his actions are proof that they were sanctioned by God. We are all going through hard times right now in the quarantine, whether it's illness, um, perhaps the loss of a loved one, a premature end to a promising senior year of school, uh, loss of a job, or the loss of uh, just a daily routine. Uh, in this gospel message, we find a peace and grace being uh, called to, to uh, a world of hope and voice of the shepherd that we are to follow. We pray for our close relationships with God. We do this by being 
being reminded of the gifts of God's unmerited grace and forgiveness. And we will do this once again when we come to the font to remember the gift of grace in baptism and to the table to remember the abundant hope that we receive in the body of Christ as we share the sacrament. May God bless you and keep us safe.